Gentlemen, Derek, boom in the building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, is it working now? Yes, and we can hear yeah. you. Good sir. We we appreciate you doing this. Derek, thank you so that? much for uh, for uh, hanging out with us, man. We really appreciate. It. We know you're a busy guy. If I die first yeah, yeah, is yeah. everywhere right now with festivals, man. I'm I'm so happy that you guys yeah. are getting all the big festivals, man. Can you can you talk about some of the stuff that you guys have coming up, or plug or promote anything you like? Oh shit! Uh, yeah, I mean it's gonna be a crazy uh, summer. There's so many festivals going on, and so many new festivals uh, that I haven't never heard of before too. And we're on all of them, so uh, I would say probably if there's a metal or a hardcore festival going on in your state, we're probably playing it. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome when rewind like about i think it was about a year and a half ago so the bands already put together and then for some reason something happens i'm not really sure the details but i imagine travis calls you up and he's like bro you got to come over here and party with us what was that phone call like about getting you to join on that project uh you know it was nothing uh their old drummer, I think, was just a little overcommitted. He had some other obligations, like big touring obligations and stuff that uh, would have probably prevented him from being able to do a lot of stuff with If I Die First. So it was just that kind of situation. And me and Travis uh, have stayed pretty tight. And uh, he hit me up and asked me, you know, if I'd be interested. And I checked out the stuff and kind of played along to some some things and met the guys and everything went really well and you know that was that hell yeah awesome for those for those of you guys that don't know what a, if i die first sounds like and i believe derek you're not in this video correct i'm in it but uh, i didn't play on this song i joined the band uh like the day before this video was made and they were kind of finishing recording the song while we were making the video Cool. I want to so, hear something he's playing on. Why are you playing the stuff he's not on? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's fine, you know. Uh, it's, it's not cool fine song. with me. I want my boy to fucking try. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. yeah. We'll go with nightmares. This is, this is the first one that I played on. Uh, the first uh, video I did with him for a song that I played. Bro, on. I was so weird looking at you because I grew up with your band. So like a lot of your projects. So like I remember you when you look super young, and it's just like <laughs> cool to see us all like kind of like get older as we go. <laughs> what was I trying to say? Yeah. Like, it's just tripping me out a little bit. Yeah, cool. You can hear the difference in the drumming, too, because you always have those, like, fast, quick fills in, in a lot of your music. So, and you could hear it in, in this particular track right there, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, I've I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, there's like a, I've got a little bag of tricks that I definitely abuse, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, so uh, let's talk with, let's yeah. let's talk uh Chole is it cholera or cholera it's just cholera i guess Choler. okay so why why pick that band name was did that did that title of that color of violence album just resonate that much to to start a completely uh, opposite side project you know like <clears throat> there's just uh, a lot of different stuff that uh that me and Travis have worked on over the years uh, that had no real like outlet for any kind of projects we were involved in. And color of violence has always sort of been a, um, a like very open to experimentation, do kind of whatever, you know, just more like for the art, for the sake of art kind of thing than like any uh, more pop leaning stuff. And so uh, we started writing some more, dancey kind of melodic music that didn't really um fit in with the metal stuff uh you know and um and so we kind of created an offshoot of the color of violence and color of violence is just like a, a different spelling of color of violence you know uh, just a different way of oh. uh, it kind of sounds the same you know um and uh and so it's it's Clever. like um, the same project, but not the same project, basically, you know? Gotcha. Let's check out Fever. 
That's fire. It's fire. It's such a cool, like, synth wavy vibe. Uh, Lloyd, I need to cue something up. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Derek? Yeah. What is your favorite tour out of all the projects you've been like involved in? What's like the first memory that you think of when like touring? What's like something that stands out to you a lot? Uh, there's, I mean, there's so many, you know, like, uh, probably the craziest is like, <clears throat> Well, there's, there's a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff too. Uh, but there's a tour we did where we had to drop off the end of it. Um, or, or maybe we finished. I can't remember. But we were driving to somewhere and all four of our tires had blown. And like the car was like breaking down on top of that. And we were like just grinding down the highway. Uh. And uh, ended up. I think abandoning the van in a movie theater parking lot. And we took a U-Haul like box truck from Virginia back to Florida. And me and our old bass player had to ride in the box uh, in the dark, you know, like before smartphones and shit. Oh, <laughs> no geez, lights. That grind. Dang, that is yeah, crazy. For like, uh, yeah, I mean, that sticks out for sure. <laughs> I, I, I would remember that for sure. Hey, so when when Sonny came back and you guys did the two uh, the two one off singles, was there was there any ever any more to that as far as let's let's do another full EP, let's do another mini run, or is yeah. this is this his schedule just too crazy? Yeah, we talk about it all the time, and we've written more songs together and have a lot of kind of unfinished pieces of things. It's just uh, you know, it's not, not even just Sonny that's busy. Everybody's schedules are crazy now, so. Uh, it, it really, you know, takes a lot to get everybody available in the same state at the same time. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and with the amount of time free, uh, that it takes to do something like do a whole record, you know? Um, but I mean, you know, I think everybody wants to, it's just, uh, it's hard to carve out the time, you know? So there's, so there is a possibility of finishing those tracks and putting out something down the road. Yeah, anything's possible, you know. Good like answer. I said, I think every well, I mean, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up for anything. <clears throat> I just, you know, I th everybody still talks. We're all still friends, you know, we're all still tight. Um Y'all got a group chat? It, uh they pop up from time to time, you know. <laughs> um cool. but uh but it, it you know, I I'm sure that everybody would love to uh if the timing would work out, you know. What is the true meaning behind the Skeletor picture? <laughs> Dude, don't ask me, man. <laughs> uh, I think it's just kind of a you know a joke that that stuck for a long time. Yeah, a very long time. <laughs> for a long ass time. <laughs> what was the most challenging song? Like, so I I could from first to last is a crazy good project already. What was like the hardest song for you to like? play like drum wise um maybe while the track while tracking like you i would say what was the most challenging i don't know something that took more takes than the other something that really pushed you and you really had to get it out there is a there's a couple on um i'll say i'll talk about two there's one on the self-titled album that um i think that's the album let me open up spotify real quick i got i got it on my screen to help and, and, to help you out yeah um i uh, yeah let's oh no you know what i think they're both on they're my both dude's on got such phone. a catalog he's got to actually visually look at the names through yeah. that. that's <laughs> an accomplishment but they're they're both on uh i think they're both on throne to the wolves but anyway well one uh Sorry, I'm looking it up. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so on uh, on Throne of the Wolves, there was um, <laughs> uh, I'll inoculate the world. That song was uh, fucking really, really a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really uh I was very proud of uh my performance on that record I think because you oh, know yeah. it was a self-produced record and I think that um we were all really at the top 
of our game at that point, just years and years of relentless touring and playing and doing nothing but like, <laughs> hell yeah. About like staying in shape for that. Do you feel like you've like been away for a little too long and you didn't like have the muscle memory and you had to like kind of almost work out and get yourself to a point where you like, it felt right? Oh yeah, dude. When we did that, uh, you know, that the first reunion we did, I don't think I had played drums in like f- six years. Mm. And uh, and I was fat as shit, you know. <laughs> I was I was drinking a bunch back then, and uh, and uh, I was just so so out of shape, and uh, you know, glad that's the fucking band photo that made it to our Spotify with me all. Bl- <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that getting ready for that emo night show after not playing drums for like six years. You know, and being that out of shape and stuff was, uh, man, it was it was punishing. And then I finally kind of pulled it together, and then ended up having a like a really bad fever. The night of the show. Oh no! <laughs> so, but we made it through, and it was so much fun. You know, so. <laughs> what do you What do you do on when on, when you have your days off? What do you do? Like, what are your What are your uh, hobbies and I stuff? Mean, you know, I work on music usually um or uh, you know or i'll like draw or paint or um we have a new uh a new puppy Aww. so i've been doing a lot with the uh, with the new dog spending a lot of time with him what kind of dog it's like a a big mutt it's like four different kinds of tiny dogs you know he'll probably never weigh more than like five pounds <laughs> it's just like a tiny psycho. My dog's probably about the same thing. We have a pug wall and he's probably like seven pounds. A pug uh, wall. Yeah. Is there is there any plans to do like another kind of completely different musical style project down the road? Yeah, totally. There's already like Color of Violence is like a project that's gonna be more of like a collective for a bunch of different projects under that umbrella. You know what I mean? We've put out we put out a couple of mixtapes of just uh, repurposed like uh, Kmart music and stuff and like a bunch of weird stuff already. We do these like Halloween mixtapes every year that kind of are little like teasers into um, some of the unfinished demos or old versions of songs that are all twisted around and mashed up with other stuff, you know. Um, and there will be a, a bunch of other different facets that that haven't even started yet that'll come out of that, you know. For sure. What looking um, back on your uh, from first to last catalog, what was your absolute favorite record that you ever made? Uh, it's tough, you know. Like it's hard to have a favorite because all of them were so um, such completely different experiences and and they were all really special in their own kind of way you know like there's nothing um there's nothing crazier than like the first time i ever got to go to a real studio and record uh for something that was gonna i knew was gonna get put out you know and that's an amazing experience but then like so was working with ross robinson you know so was uh um the whole process of making dear diary was crazy we built the studio while we were recording in it you know with a friend Um, i still remember that fucking cd drop bro yeah (laughs) yeah and 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 meeting sunny and all of that stuff it was just such a a kind of magic like carefree time you know Um, why are in these memories when did you realize you had it drumming like because that band like for first last blew the fuck up pretty fucking like quick so like drums were like heavily influenced in that that was one of my favorite like drum albums like for a time when did you know you had it bro when did you start to feel it i mean i you know i always played music uh as long as i can remember um my mom's got pictures of me when i was like two or three with a little care bear drum set you know um but i i got (laughs) my uh i i was playing in bands in high school and uh for one reason or another decided that i needed to start playing drums because i couldn't find uh drummers that wanted to play like extreme metal the way i wanted to 
and mm-hmm. uh, and so I was like, fuck it, I'll do it myself, you know, and uh, and so I put together like a kind of trash drum kit and taught myself on that, and then um, a couple, maybe a year or two later, my folks got me a cheap beater kit, and I took that with me to Florida when I went uh, to go to school there, and and then that's where I met, you know, the FFTL guys. When you when you guys this is a two part question. When you guys recorded heroin, I'd always heard that you recorded it in an actual haunted basement or house or something like that. And then the second part of the question is, how did you know Wes Borland was the perfect fit for that particular uh, particular album? Um, so like that uh, that studio was a studio uh, owned by a lady named Sylvia Massey who uh, did, she produced like the early Tool albums and stuff. And uh, a couple of years, I guess, before we went there, she had bought this old vaudeville theater, like an old theater from the like turn of the century, like from the 1910s or 1920s, you know, Mm -hmm. that was supposedly haunted, you know. Um, And uh, they basically repurposed the theater into a recording studio. And they had the big mixing board right in the middle of where all the seating would be for the auditorium, you know. And then uh, there was an upstairs area that had like apartments uh, where the bands that were recording there would stay in those apartments while they were recording. Um, And like, you know some of the guys would be like, Ooh, who closed that door? Or like, Oh, I think I heard a ghost or whatever <laughs> kind of shit. But, uh, I don't ever remember really having any trouble with any ghosts or anything there. It was a cool uh, experience though. And we did record the drums in the basement underneath the stage, like in the old orchestra pit. Oh, sick. And then how did you know, how did you know that? Uh, and also how about the oh, right. uh, West come around? Right. Yeah. Um, well, we were going through a lawsuit with our old bassist at the time. And uh, we hadn't really thought much about having, you know, bringing somebody new in. Uh, we, we just hadn't really thought about it. I think everybody kind of assumed Matt or Travis or somebody would just play bass and we'd figure out uh, somebody to, um, to tour with us later. Uh, and it was Ross's suggestion uh, to to try to see if west would be interested you know uh because he had ross had done the limp biscuit records and stuff and they still had a great relationship and so west came down and we uh chit chatted and and kind of got to know each other a bit and and had a great time together he's you know an amazing player uh, amazing guy you know super super professional always came in and killed it every every time Sounds about up, right you know um and yeah if we were i feel like super lucky to have gotten uh to to do you know make music with him especially for as long as we did you know derek are you down to review a band or two with us and or do some trivia uh you know i'll try what i'm gonna base the trivia off of what i'm gonna ask you right now what would you say is your your strongest knowledge regarding like a movie franchise or a tv series what do you know the most about and i'm gonna pick the trivia based on that like horror probably like oh you're winning bg's heart old horror movies excellent not like fucking old old though you know but uh so like friday the 13th or halloween or something like that yeah yeah, the stuff from I guess my childhood, you know. You got it. That's you our could. childhood too, man. Yeah, yeah, the the eighties, nineties. Yeah. Uh, I think off the top of my head, I already have one. I believe this. Okay, let's try this. I'm ninety nine percent sure this actor is in the first Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> Who is the major major actor that's in the first Friday the Thirteenth movie that does die? That went on to have a very successful film career. Kevin Bacon. That is Ooh! correct! Give me a hell yeah! Let's see if the wheel is kind today to you. We have to, we're gonna spin it. It could be some t- some torture stuff. Tremors. Some torture. Oh, Tremors? Dude, I remember Tremors, man. Tremors. 
Tremors was a wild yeah, one. Tremors was great. They're like yeah. still making yeah, them too. When it came out, that's how I first saw Kevin Bacon. I never saw any of the other ones. Bong rip, and I have to take a shot. Derek, is, are, were you? I don't know if you still are, but it is a marijuana related show. Are you 420 friendly, sir? Uh, I I am, uh, but uh, I'm I'm uh, not able to at the moment. But uh, I will cheer you on. Smoke weed every day. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lloyd, go ahead and uh, ask another question too, if you have it. What is the worst injury you have gotten while touring? <laughs> Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I've never gotten hurt too badly, um, on the road. Uh, I've, I've, I've thought that I broke my finger a couple times hitting it on like the snare rim. And, uh, I, there was a, a time that, uh, I played guitar on a song live and our old tour manager would play drums for that song. And uh, I, Matt whacked me in the face with the guitar and like, gave me like a, a bloody head. Um, but that wasn't bad. Did I you play through it? Yeah, we just played through and it. I, did, I didn't even need stitches or anything. So oh, okay. like it, it wasn't bad, it, you know. So, yeah, I've been pretty lucky that that's the worst uh, that there's been. Give me the worst from first to last gig ever. Everything went wrong on this gig. You could not hear anything. Maybe that everything's detuned the wrong way for some reason. This is the worst gig yeah. that ever happened. I mean, there's been so fucking many. You know? <laughs> like, uh, we, you know, the first tour I did with them was like a 30 date tour, and we only ended up playing like seven shows because the rest oh. of them were fucking canceled or just Oof. never got booked or the people flaked or whatever it was, you know. Back when we were booking booking ourselves, you know, um, and that sucked. But it sucked too. We went out with bad religion and would just get bottles thrown at us every night. <laughs> you know, nobody uh, wanted to see a bunch of who are emo these kids. emo kids throw yeah. beer at them. Yeah, so uh, you know, and I mean, a similar situation. We opened up for Kiss in Europe for some reason. You wow. know, uh, to just thunderous confusion <laughs> was that was that dear diary days or was that after that no no that was that was the later days yeah uh, do you feel like an og days. of the emo slash scene world i don't know it's weird because there's definitely like a lot of people that i i would consider like more ogs than me and us i think we were um in at like a really early stage in in like a branch of that world, you know? Uh, I remember like a whole real... wave of people looking just like the band coming out after you guys started rocking out. Like, did you notice like that kind of change? Like people started to like reflect your image a little bit? It's hard to, you know, like, it's hard to like take credit for anything. Uh, of it course, feels yeah. Like it, was, it was like a movement that was happening at that time and we were a part of it. You know what I mean? And how much influence we had is hard to quantify, you know? But yeah. we were definitely uh, a part of it, you know? Huge part of it. Hell yeah. Uh, chat has a question. They want to know if you guys ever toured with the Skylet Drive. We actually have a Skylet Drive on the show pretty frequently. Yes, um, they did. Yeah, 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 we did. Uh, yeah, we've. I think we did a couple of tours with them actually around the Throne to the Wolves time and uh, maybe the self-titled time as well. Because I think we toured with them when they were first kind of starting to come out, and then we toured with them again after they had become pretty successful. Yo, when you woke up and saw your music video on like MTV or Fuse, like how bad did that blow your mind? Yeah, I mean, uh, that was. A dream yes, they used true, to play music you know? videos early in the morning, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go yeah. ahead. No, yeah, I, I definitely always wanted to to do that. You know, I think it was really special going to shoot our first video, more, even more so than seeing it on. You know, just mm -hmm. being there and seeing all the all the 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 grips and the uh, and the people that are working on the set and all this stuff, and they're all there to help you you know, make your video and stuff is a really surreal experience, you know? I got one more Friday the 13th trivia question for you, and this one is a hard one. This is still about the original movie, and you have to dig deep uh -oh. on this one. Here we go. Uh-oh. 
At this point in the movie, Jack, Marcy, and Ned, I don't even know who they are, have all been killed. Brenda goes downstairs in the cabin and suggests they play this board game. They are unaware anyone has, di has died at this point. What is the board game that they want to play that which nobody wants to play? Sorry. Dude, I have no idea. Sorry is not know. correct. And <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the button because we got him. We got him. <laughs> we stuffed him. Hell yeah. Oh, my dude was thinking. Holy shit. The oh, answer, what was it? What was it? The answer was Monopoly, but nobody wants to play it, it says. Uh, but Monopoly, and then right after that, I think That's he bursts in and starts killing everybody. But you probably should have just guessed that since it's like the most popular board game there and is. Nobody wants to play it half the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Well, well, Derek, we know you're a busy man. We appreciate you spending some time with us, dude. Uh, we look forward to all yeah. the shows and festivals you guys have lined up and uh, look forward to hopefully someday getting the uh, those tracks with Sonny out and about so we can all hear them. That'd be amazing. But dude, thanks again so much for hanging out. And I apologize about the technical difficulties. We powered through it, brother. Yeah, no, it's all good. I had a great time. Thank you guys for having me. Aww, Thank you, sir. I like him, BG. Bring him back. <laughs> yeah, take care. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek, boom! Yeah, hell yeah!